This video is brought to you by MR Hi-Fi Reviews. We are driven to create high quality, visually stimulating and honest informative reviews of personal audio, home audio and technology, bringing you the latest and greatest news from the audio industry. Visit us at MRHiFireviews.com. Hey everybody, what up, what up, what up? I'm gonna be bringing in some fine gentlemen here in a second. Just wanted to say hello, my name's Marcello. A lot of you guys hopefully know me out there and for those of you joining for the first time, welcome. We're excited to have you uh, this evening for a discussion about the Rockwell from Amson Sound. We have a couple special guests I'd like to bring on and then um, we have Tyler coming on in a moment here. So let's bring, let's bring in the gents. One second here. Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? Happy Friday. Hey everybody! Hey, <laughs> hey everybody! Hey everybody! How how's uh how's everybody's Friday night? Uh, it's just starting here. Uh, you can see it's still daylight out, so it's it's not quite night yet. But um, work day is over, so that's right. The week the weekend has begun. What's up, Android? What's up, dude? What's up, Elnric? How are you guys doing? Dustin, Raz, Joe. Andy, Snow Ranger, Ninja, Jordan, it's up to all of you guys. So we'll give it a few minutes, we'll chat a little bit. How's our audio sound out there in the YouTube land? Are we sounding good? Justin, you guys talk a little too so they can gauge your audio. I think so. I mean, I'd like to think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the dulcet tones and the radiance sound fantastic. So. <laughs> the radiance. I like these stock headphones, cable man. or not stock cable. These are stock. Uh, yeah, this this is stock cable. I can't, can't afford a third party cable. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, you know what? Um, there's a there's a company that sent me is sending me a cable that was actually pretty reasonably priced for these. Um, uh, but I have to test it out first, then I'll let you know because it's not too expensive. All right, looks like. But when you, but when you can't uh, afford it, you should build it yourself. It's that's solid. true. That's true. <laughs> You definitely can. I don't, I don't have time to do that because I do live streams instead. So. <laughs> uh, All right. So we got, I got. Got an excuse for everything. So we got we got good audio checks from everybody out there on uh, YouTube. Thank you guys for that, and thank you again for everybody um, joining us. So. All right. So, let's talk a little bit about this beauty. So. Justin has uh, created a beast of a beautiful sounding amp. And so that's what this stream is all about. We're gonna talk about the Rockwell and kind of go through some of its design features, some of the differences between this amp and some of the other amps in his lineup, as well as some of my audible sound impressions and maybe some of Justin's audible sound impressions. And then we are going to talk a little bit about some stuff that that uh, headphones.com has got also going on with Amsterdam, a really cool partnership coming up. So we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about tonight. So let's let's kind of get into it. Let's talk about let's talk about the Rockwell. So first of all, let's let's talk about what inspired you to um, create this amp, Justin. So. I am a fan of low distortion and high efficiency speakers, which is sort of what brought me to headphones. Um, if you, and this was sort of the start of the whole company, if you, if you build amps that are good for horn loaded speakers, speakers that are 102 to 160 dB efficient, the kind of thing where you can hear the flapping of a fly's wings, uh, that same sort of resolution was similar to what's used in headphones. And for me, the holy grail was always using triodes, which are the right kind of power, the right kind of tonality, uh, and getting them to behave well. And so I, the, the Rockwell is really the third name of the same project, you know, the third stab at the apple, if it were, because it was originally the classic wonder, and then it became the Agartha, and now it's the Rockwell. Um, and with each one, things became a little different. Uh, but the Rockwell was sort of going back to the original circuit that had proven so good to me and pairing it with the best iron 
in the most developed layout. So the best iron was the iron that came out of the development project of the Nautilus, which then trickled into the bigger bin and the ovation all share the same transformers. And so now that I had good transformers, uh, I was, you know, I, I had a good foundation to move from. Uh, and then the layout of the bigger bin is probably the most cohesive, well thought out layout I have as far as amps that are still on the wood plat wood chassis. Uh, and the ovation mimics the, the bigger bin layout. So uh, I tried to make it work. It's a very big PCB. Uh, finding enough room for it was a challenge, but you know our our skill set with wiring has grown. Uh, our our workmanship has grown. Our layout process has grown, and we were up to the task. We made it work uh, and made it work well, and did some changes that we knew would lower the noise floor. Uh, both by simplifying things, because the Agartha was once a 300 B amp. And it was solid state rectified, uh, going back to it being a tube amp, a uh, tube rectified power supply, and keeping it as a 6.3 volt amplifier uh, simplified the power supply, took out a lot of hash and ripple out of the power supply, which lowered the noise floor. Uh, we included hum pots, which lets you I think you maybe you can talk more about it as far as your own experience, but the hum pots are designed to let you dial in the noise floor to the lowest it can be for each tube individually. And uh, we've had really, really good results with that, letting people uh, adjust the amp to their tubes. But the point of the classic wonder, the Agartha, the bigger Ben, was to use big triodes, big triode power tubes. So 2A3, uh, 45, 6A3, 6BG4 are all big triodes, uh, moderate power, big triodes. Uh, the goal has never for me been about power, but low noise, wide bandwidth are always the first two things I think about. And the, the, the problem for the Gartha uh, is that I can't afford a new old stock 300B. Right, it's expensive. just, it, I'm not prepared to cut out organs to make it happen. <laughs> uh, um, but that, I mean, you know, $2,000 each, $3,500 each. No thanks. Per tube. Um, that's just not like, that's silly. That like, just can't even fathom it. Uh, so the original circuit, the 6BG4, uh, is a very, very common U.S. manufactured tube. And you can get old, very, very old versions, 1940s through 1970s, for $50 each. The pair in front of you was matched by a tube matcher for me, and it was $100 on eBay. It's awesome. You, they and sound great. Plate. And they sound great, the, the, too. They're, and Right. And so the, the point of this is to be able to get that triode sound while still being able to access new old stock tubes in an affordable manner. That whole amp, the whole tube complement of the of uh, the Rockwell is under $200 in full NOS form. I think it's actually more expensive to buy the new version of the power tube versus the new old stock, which I don't really understand, but that's what the market will bear. So, um, you know, we thought long and hard about how much noise versus distortion, and we ended up keeping it the same way we've done with all of our amps, which is that we run a high primary impedance on the output transformers because we don't care about power. Um, I under spec all of my power ratings. Uh, if you need more power, there's a different gun, there's a different tube. Uh, but this is not about that. This is going after new old stock, big, big tube triodes for the sound. And they, they have a very unique sound signature. You know, I don't know if you have a picture of a KT88 next to it, but a KT88 is actually quite a bit smaller than a 6B4G. And so things for people to remember is two eight, a, a 45 is, that right there is a 1626 triad. 
let's see. So if you have a 45, then you have two A3, two 45s put together. Then you have the 6A3. Six, 6A3 six and a 6B4G are the exact same tube. They're just pinned out differently. And so you could actually get a, a four pin 6A3 adapter to, to the 6BG, 6B4G and plug it right in without issue. The reason why I like the 6B4G though is instead of it being four pins, which kind of can teeter at times and see, the seating is always a little curious and are not really fantastic tube sockets, in the octal form, the Belton tube socket that these use is the very best tube socket that's produced. Um, you know, you could almost pick the amp up by the tubes and assume that they won't fall out. So that's why we went with octals. We were trying to find robust, uh, simple solutions that work really well. I also like the fact that the the tubes are um, mounted flush with the amp as well, so they sit flush. So when you're looking at it, I mean, there there's no spacing or gap whatsoever. It looks it's just the lines are really, really clean from a design perspective, the way you guys did that and dropped them just completely even. I really dig that. It's something that we may move all of our, as I'm the guy that does the design work, the CAD work for it, I have to probably make the time to do it, to, to do the radiusing and whatnot. But there's some other things in the, in the lab that we've been working on that are occupying more of my time. But sure. this, you know, with everything that gets a fresh revision, and this got a fresh revision from the Agartha 300B to, you know, what you have here, uh, we try to make things a little bit better, and having it, everything flush was one of those goals. Yeah, I've noticed. Because it gave it kind of a, a more modern look to some yeah, degree. Classic, just, but modern. Yeah, classic, modern, and just clean. And I think you, I just, you know, as long as I've known you and kind of having an eye and ear on your products, you do tend to have, as you design new stuff, you trickle down some of the technology into some of the other models, which is what everybody loves, you know, because then the other models can eventually, you know, at different price points can be, you know, have some of maybe that technology and other ones, which is cool. Let me uh, pause for a second, say hello to a few people that join. What's up, Mark? What's up, TT? What's, what's up, Ray Rod? Yeah, and noise floor adjustments. We're definitely going to talk about that in a second here, Ninja, because I feel like that is a really cool feature of this amp. Um, everybody's complimenting uh, Taryn's hair. Yeah, Taryn does have the nice wavy hair. I dig it. Hey, thanks for whoever just smashed that like button. Don't forget to smash the like button out there. That helps other people see this content. We appreciate that. Um, anyways, okay, so go ahead, Justin. Continue on, sir. Well, so just the it is probably our second most technical amp to build at this point you know um the hum pots would have been simpler with just two resistors we chose to not do that because given each tube and how quirky or not quirky your power your power line is uh having the ability to, to modulate change the value uh, allows you to reduce the noise floor. You know, uh, triodes have huge plates and they can make noise. And so finding ways to have them run as quietly as possible is super important. So we have, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the output tubes are, are DC filament, the, AC, the input tube is AC filament, but on the DC, just varying it uh, gives us, you know, just the ability to quiet down the amp a little bit more. I think you've experienced that, Marcello, when you were adjusting it, because I didn't, I didn't leave it preset for you, if I remember correctly. I mean, I think the no, you didn't, because we we have different tubes on there. So I think that let me just kind of zone in here and focus in a little bit on this lens. So these little hum pots back here, to me. I, I absolutely love this feature because every tube is a, just a little bit different, right? And so sometimes, you know, you, you have, being, able, being able to have that feature allows you to make the ant more quiet. Hey, hold on one second. We got Tyler calling in. 
Tyler, late to the party, fashionably. He better look good for us. There he is. He's in the green room. We'll bring him in in just one second here. Um, hang tight, Tyler. We'll get you in here. So I definitely experienced... A, okay, so most of the time I prefer to listen off of 100 to and below on most of the amps just for my personal taste. Um, however, this amp, I thoroughly enjoy the 300 ohm tap on this amp. Being able to take the hum pots and fine tune the hum from the tubes and using you know a 300 ohm headphone on a three on the 300 ohm out it's pretty freaking magical the sound of this amp which we'll get into in a minute here sounds really really good let me bring in tyler right now hold on one sec guys so continue on justin while i'm bringing in tyler well so one of the things to be said is like if you look at almost all of my designs the only two that are true triodes is the Kenzie, which is an, you know Kenzie Innovation sharing the same idea, and the Rockwell. Everything else is either tri what we call triode strap, so it's mimicking a triad sound. And so when you think of old school tube sound, this is sort of the quintessential, one of the more quintessential examples, right? Because you're, you're not modifying the tube, you're really running the tube as simply and as organically as you can. So that's that's the whole point of it. There he is, there he is. Mm. I'll try to fix all this, this is all, I gotta, the format's all weird, funky, but we'll get it fixed in a second. But It's like the Brady Bunch would. starting point. Yeah, yeah it, it uh, does actually look like that. <laughs> It really does. Hey, JTB, thank you for that super chat love, man. I appreciate it. It's it's a five dollars for Taryn's hairstyling gel and HD space. <laughs> That's hilarious. Awesome. There was a lot of a lot of styling stuff that went into my hair for the stream, so I appreciate it. It looks excellent. It looks excellent. Hey, Andy, thank you also for the uh, super chat five dollars. Use this to buy Tyler an alarm <laughs> clock. Actually, guys, don't pick on Tyler because he's having construction done at his house. Like his whole house is being torn apart because he had water damage. So he did the best yep, he could. No so it's, it's not Tyler's, it's not really Tyler's <laughs> fault, but we're just happy to have him with us. But yes, it is still kind of funny. $5 for an alarm clock. Um, <laughs> hey, what's up, Drifting Bunnies? Good to see you. John, what's up, man? Thanks for joining. Uh, anybody else I missed that came? I think we, we got everybody in here. All right, cool. Tyler, has it gone to the place where you're laughing yet? Or are you crying? Has, has a, we, a we, bottle been it, broken? It, about... Or. Well, it's been ongoing construction y stuff, and we're dealing with that more or less for like two m month and a half now. So, <laughs> yeah, it's but we're 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 at the final stretch. We we got it rocked out. Um, I think we have two more days of construction left. So, um, but yeah, we're 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 at the final stretch. We're looking forward to having the bathrooms back and not sharing bathrooms again, because who wants to share a bathroom with their significant others and four year old? Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> That's hard. What's up, Jeremy? Welcome, buddy. Good to see you, man. Oh, man. Yeah, that's hard. What up, water, guys? Water damage is no fun. Good to see you, man. How's your Friday? Uh, it's busy, man. I uh, I didn't get home until like 4-ish. Uh, I left the house at 9.30. Uh, yeah, lots of stuff happening today. A lot of daughter stuff. You know this, Fields. I know. I know. I <laughs> Actually, know how that three of you know these Fields. <laughs> Or two yes. of you, sorry. I wonder, Three of us. wonder who the odd man out is. <laughs> Give it some time. Yeah, take yeah. as long as you need for that, buddy. Trust me. I've got. And it was hot it's today, surprisingly. So, look at that mug. Some ginger beer. That mug that, is amazing. I have my my daughter decorated it. She put the Banksy panda. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out which way I need to turn to get yeah, it. Yeah, And then of course look, some of her little octopus stickers. That's cool. And a, a nice refreshing. Um, cock and bowl. Nice uh, ginger beer. <laughs> and then, Taryn, you got you got. Uh, hold yours up. Let me see yours again. You got Let's my daughter's see. favorite movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I love me, it. me and my wife pick up new mugs every time we go to Disneyland. So it's a tradition. That we can't wait to go to Disneyland. COVID. I'm looking forward to taking my daughter there. I think I'm gonna wait till she's a little older though. Maybe like 
six, seven, four. somewhere around they, there. Yeah, they say four or five is like the perfect time. Okay. Well, there, yeah. there's there's like the time where everything is magical for them, and then there's a the time where you get to have fun. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I'm you, looking forward to that time. Justin, well, you, you, you know, probably know like, these fields. I, I, yeah, I've had the annual pass where I'm like that's 12 insane. miles from Disneyland. Um, but it's like going home to the mothership, you know, because they've seen every cartoon and princess and, <laughs> you know, that's so cool. you feel at home in that world. That's cool. 100%. Um, 100%. Okay, so let's go back to, let's go back to the Ooh, amp. Cool. Let's talk about this guy. So you got, so you designed this one, Justin, with five headphone taps. So this is similar to the majority of your top tier amplifiers, correct? Yep. So this is, I would sort of say like my true purist idea. So like the, the Nautilus is the big gun and the, the, the proof in the work kind of amp in that it, it is though it is the best performing it is also the best performing because of how the the math was done how how the how it was built right matter um and so you know it's it's sort of like the master craftsman doing the work you know it, it it's that way for good reason kind of thing the bigger ben is meant to sort of be the modern upstart to the to the nautilus and is like well i can give you almost everything in performance wise and feature set wise and i can do it in a more efficient package and that's the bigger ben both the nautilus and bigger ben are um so i went to uh uh see a what would i call it i went to have these amps most of my amps tested at an outside testing facility this week and i, I was pleasantly surprised that i dramatically underestimate power um which was which was which was nice um the the nautilus and the bigger ben are really they're big guns they're really big guns if they're if you put in five ar4s and you put in 65 50s you know you, you do have you know can bear you know upwards of eight watts on a whole lot of problems uh, and it's meant to be a really tonally dense sound, which is obviously changeable via tube rolling. So that there's no feedback, um, you know, but it, I, I like a warm, tonally dense sound. And I think that as headphones become more and more incisive instruments uh, and DAX too, having a amplifier that adds weight and density and layers and you know all sorts of descriptions for more information um is really really helpful the uh the rockwell is a slightly different approach the rockwell is trying to put less spin on that ball perhaps not that i'm trying to put spin on the ball but the rockwell is just sort of this is what a triode really is and this is what the tube can sound like when well presented. Now, the only thing that kind of, mod the three things that modulate the Rockwell sound are that we're using a, a 5K primary, not a 2.5 or a 3.5. 2.5 or 3.5 are gonna introduce more distortion, give a slightly warmer sound, and oh, by the way, would double its power. Again, I'm not chasing power with it. Uh, the use of the Jupiter caps have a lot of really good micro detail. If we had chosen something a little bit more neutral, then, you know, we could have leaned out the sound if we wanted to, but we didn't. Um, and the choice of having a tube rectified, um, we could have gone for more power, but again, it was never about chasing power with this amp. It's really about trying to hear uh, a really good triode, what a really good old tube sounds like. You know, because it has a, so, a lighter touch. Um, it, it, it has more air and space. Um, 
and it, you know, I think it's probably a less intimate soundstage, but it has more information uh, mid-range to high frequency than I think, or more focus on it than perhaps the bigger bend would have. Yeah, I was actually going to ask, because I'm sure that there are people in the chat who have no experience with tube amplifiers. Um, what what would be the big difference between using those older tubes versus newer tubes? What are you what are you getting out of it? So, uh, aside from lack of EPA violations, um, so older tubes are um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're 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 done before the EPA created Superfund sites. Yeah. Um, you know, arsenic and mercury and things there the, you know they were done differently for different reasons yes um but they also last longer than new tubes they have more harmonic texture than new tubes um they tend to be better behaved than new tubes uh, you know new tubes are using modern manufacturing techniques which typically are computer controlled rather than having craftsmen do it um, I think there's some exceptions if you look like Kellerog tubes or Ellerog El tubes or KR audio tubes. Those are still very craftsman oriented, small batch production stuff. But, you know, material sciences has increased. You have better material sciences with new tubes, so you have more consistency. But older tubes were more, their manufacturing process was willing to waste more material for better outcomes, typically. Yeah. Um, and so I think that like when you if you were to buy uh, the Sovtech 6A3 or the Sovtech 6B4G and compare it to the Sylvanias that are in there the Sylvania black plates from 1955 I think that you are going to find that there is more texture and harmonic um, harmonic properties with the Sylvania versus uh, the soft tech, which is the new production tube. Um, whereas you may find that the soft tech is like adding a little bit of feedback. It is better behaved across all, all facets, but it is more beige. That's and I would say that that's that, a great that, explanation. That, that, I think to some degree that that could be said for almost all vacuum tubes to some degree. Um, you know, I don't run new power. I don't run new old stock power tubes uh, because they're they're really expensive in general, and um, finding their providence is very difficult. If you're buying power tubes on eBay, you're almost always being lied to. Anybody who tells you different <laughs> is lying to you. Um, it's a gamble. Well, I, I could. We can go into this, but like. Tube testing should be voltage reg, you know, voltage controlled. The tester has to be calibrated, and the person who performs the test has to have let the filaments uh, 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 light up long enough. And you can goose up the results by like increasing the filament voltage, not telling the person instead of like six point three, you now make it six point four, six point five. It's going to give a higher result than if you were running the filament at six point three. And ran your test, and almost always, I mean, you can do, guys just go run, go to eBay and go buy a tube. They'll tell you it's new old stock. Let's say like a five A or four rectifier. It's new old stock. The minimum is thirty two, and this one measures fifty. You're like, okay, great, it's fifty. They didn't tell you that the brand new number is actually one fifty, and, and that new is one hundred. Anything above one hundred, you consider sort of new. So you bought a tube at 50 because he told you that it's 20 percent above the minimum number and you thought that's okay yeah. when really that tube the reason why five air fours from mullard are worth 250 to 400 dollars each is when they measure 150 brand new never touched ever 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 actually ever touched they're gonna last 15 years <laughs> <laughs> Because they're fantastically built and, like you said, both not boutique but craftsman built. But but getting somebody who's going to sell you that to and tell you like 
It's scoring thirty minimum minimum good is thirty two, and I'm giving it to you at a forty four. But I didn't tell you that it, the max score is one fifty. And the same thing to be said for like twelve AX sevens. Depending on your mm-hmm. tester, a twelve AX seven. Lots of people are like, oh, it scores between eighty and a hundred. It's new old stock. A twelve AX seven on most testers, depending on the tester we're talking about, should score one twenty. Or should score sixteen hundred. You know, so if they say, "Oh, the score is eleven hundred, it's new." Mm -hmm. No, new, like true new, like buy it with a warranty, new with a receipt, is sixteen hundred, or one twenty. So finding a good, reliable tube seller to sell you good input tubes is the only thing I can typically do. I mean, I own like a really cool tester at this point, and I have invested in like testing processes so i know what i'm buying when i if someone misrepresents something on ebay i can try to ask them polite questions first take a gamble (laughs) and then test it but -hmm. most people don't so i always tell people who have are buying an amp buy an input tube or a rectifier from a reliable seller uh you know brent jesse tube depot tubes and more Mm -hmm. top three places to go because they're not going to cheat you yeah. But you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay with all three of those, so yeah. Uh, and but yeah, I, I interesting. But you know, a, a sixty five fifty new old stock like true never touched, or you know, um, tongue sole sixty five fifty should be three to four hundred dollars. Gently touched is probably three hundred dollars each. Which tubes are not cheap, my man, especially the good ones. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. And, and, and we, I mean, the th- uh, go ahead, Taryn. I was going to say the interesting thing is I've never actually met an audiophile that's kept gear your past 15 years before. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's a whole new whole new world there. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that there is some definite truth to that, especially in like the mid-fi to even some of the hi-fi stuff. But I could see keeping the Nautilus for 15 years because that's like, end game in my mind but you know or maybe even the bigger band or even this amp you know um that we're talking about Mm -hmm. today um but i think you're right like if you're talking like some of the more mid-fi stuff or even some of the hi-fi stuff i mean geez amount of stuff i've kind of even cycled through it's kind of like you almost want to just constantly hear different things but i guess that's where tubes (laughs) can get very expensive though too right because you could roll tubes and try different tubes and hear different things through the tubes but like justin's saying man they can just get pricey so pricey yeah. and that's why i rely on people like justin wait there he's over here uh and like the um the tube depot guys are like elnrick or what have you to point me in the right direction <laughs> before i buy something <laughs> absolutely so. no absolutely whoever's got the most experience with them i mean they're or, or you invaluable buy something, or you buy something knowing that you, you know that it's probably going to be an enjoyable experience but that you're buying it for the experience because mm-hmm. yeah. again everybody if someone is bought, telling you it's a new old stock tube on ebay unless they have uh i forgot the tester the you know digital tester with a computer screen that measures things and they're giving you the, the scores from that they're probably lying to you and, and that's mm-hmm. okay i mean you know um there are lots of great tubes that still sound wonderful, even though they're not brand new. Makes sense. That, that's no, that, that is another factor too, right? Like where it's, like you said, they can be older or maybe not new old stock, but they still will be fantastic tubes, but they're just maybe don't have the lifetime that you would potentially say like a new old stock would have. Yes. Yeah, so, I, I mean, the, 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 one of the things, sorry, just a, one last thing. New old stock tubes, or excuse me, new tubes, newly manufactured tubes, do not last. Um, you know, it used to be said that uh, signal tubes, input tubes, have a 5,000 hour life to them, typically. And that power tubes have a 2,000 hour life to them, typically. Which, you know, depends on how much you listen every day. That's That can be a long time. Or if you um, go to sleep and forget to turn off your amp or... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> um, but I think that you will find that new tubes 
if you start measuring their life, if you pull your tubes every six months, rebias things, remeasure things, you will see that their values start dropping pretty quickly. So they, they measure Wait. high in the beginning and then they start dropping uh, much faster than they should be. What, what, um, what would you say, sorry, I don't mean to jump in, but I just had a quick question. Um, what you, would you say, what, what would be your feelings on something like the new gold lions or like what, what actually, what would be something that's your potential tube that you would recommend to people that is a new tube that isn't like a new old stock kind of thing? What, sure. what, is, what are your so, thoughts on those? No one get mad at me about this. Um, <laughs> I have great respect for a new sensor, the parent company of Gold Lion. Mm -hmm. I don't use Gold Lion tubes, uh, power tubes, because they they have a higher failure rate than I'm willing to accept. Yeah, that's fair. Fair. Uh, that said, they sound they're not my cup. Lots of everybody else likes them. They're just not my cup of tea for for a sonic profile for for most of their power tubes. That being said, uh, the two tubes that I come back to, I'll give you three. The three tubes I come back to over and over and over again is the JJ KT88. It's built like mm -hmm. a tank. Its glass is super thick. It never loses vacuum. It's having run more than a hundred pairs of them I've never had one of these vacuum on them. never had the gut the getter flash on them. you know it's 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 a tank of a tube and it's relatively inexpensive and if you hmm. buy it from somewhere like tubes and more they'll apex match it which means it's matched very very closely that's a good value and it's it's a a really good sounding tube amongst hmm. new sensor products so JJ is not a new sensor division to me it's its own company um, I uh, really like the Solvtech 12 uh, AX7 LPS long plates. I also like that for JJ's. The 12, any any time I can get a 12 AX7 where the plates are long, I know that it will not be as it will not be as quiet as a short place a short plate. What we'd call frame grid. So the frame grid ones look like they were made in Japan originally because that's some some of the frame grids were originally made there. Um, as well as I think Siemens did it. The frame grids are going to be quieter, but I like the pl big plates because big plates tend to give big sound um, and just have a different. They're they're different. So if you're always if you're chasing quiet, uh, the smaller the plate structure, the more frame grid it is, the quieter it'll be. Um, so like the C sixty J nines, the sixty nine twenty twos. You know, that's a that's a real common choice for those. But for 12AX7s or 12AU7s, I don't care about noise floor as much as I care about sort of um, mid-range density and high frequency extension. And I think the big plates tend to give me just a more romantic sound. And so that, those would be my choices. So the Softec 12AX7 LPS is a great input tube, as is the JJ802S great input to very inexpensive uh the tongue soul uh the tongue soul 6550 i used to really like until i found the jj the tongue soul the the micas which are the spacers inside the tube um there are not enough of them and it can rot it can make sort of a rattly sound if you give it a good wiggle if you're not wiggling your amp or pinging on it it should be fine it's a great sound great sounding tube <laughs> I, mean, I, I I try to play play the drums while I'm listening on my tube amps. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> well, one of the most curious things I've ever observed is when someone will sit down and start tapping on the in front of a tube to see if it's microphonic. <laughs> yep. um, I, I actually I, I, I did that. I, I did that on uh, undisclosed amp um, just because I was like, oh shit, I I can or oh shoot. I can hear that through uh, through the <laughs> cable here. I wonder if that's the Focal cable or if that's the team out there. Um, but our office also, uh, 
our new office has some heating issues, so I mm. often turn it on uh, and just heat my hands up while I'm doing live chats and stuff, just to warm up the fingers. Um, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Like my office right now, okay, it's like it was like 78 degrees today. I'll be right back, guys. One second. And uh, okay. I have this tube amp running, and then I've got like an industrial strength powered, <laughs> like black light and like four other black lights this room is like i feel like it's like 88 degrees in here right now if i start sweating and i'm like dripping sweat you guys know what's up i i'm i'm just you know boiling up from tubes and black lights i mean the nice thing is the radiance headband i don't think will stain from the sweat unlike other headbands so that's true here. and i don't sweat like that these much. unlike these lovely ones here the the, the stells that's actually exactly why I didn't wear the still is because it was hot in here. I was like, I'm not going to risk. I'm not going to yeah, risk adds it. adds patina, man. It's a patina. It uh, yeah. adds, adds that mean, special uh, you character to the to the. Eventually, headphones. you'll be able to pawn them off on eBay as, like, this is Tyler's eclectic sweaty Stelia, you know? With a special, like, leather pattern, and, like, he can sign edition oh, yeah. it. And... Oh, yeah. yeah. See, mine has a nice darkness, little darkness to it. A little lightness here and there. <laughs> I mean, there is something you know, said about like a unique headphone with aging leather. I mean, it's like a old like wallet yeah. or a really cool jacket or you know. I mean, there's I mean, there's something to be said about that. I it think is, so. It is. It's Just the, it's the, adds character. To, yeah, don't don't go to any threads where people have tried to fix the leather. It's, oh God. Oh yeah, bad idea. I've seen that. that... <laughs> yeah. Use uh, bleach. It works every time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when somebody does that, you're going to be... <laughs> no, don't, 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 don't do that. He was joking, don't everybody. Don't, 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 that's that. not... Joking. That's Tyler's sense of humor. If you don't get that by now from watching our streams, then... Well, I guess you, somebody could be new. That's Tyler's sense of humor. There you go, for new people watching the stream. Uh, let's see. Uh, nothing says love like sweat stains, Elden Rick says. That's hilarious. True story. True, True story. story. Um, man okay, funk so, right there. Well, man so, funk. So back to the design features. Is there anything else we want to touch on design-wise before we get into the audible um, impressions around this amp? Did you talk about the, uh, the, the pots? We're going to get into that in a sec, yeah. But we did mention it, but I think we're going to talk about a little bit more when I do the sound impressions because it's a big part of it. Let me just <clears throat> bring close down two, two more points. Um, Sounds good. Six CA7s are really, really good tubes. They're sort of, um, and JJ makes a very good sounding one. Um, and the Tungsol 6L6 GC STR is a stupidly good tube. It's my tube of choice. I like that um, one, especially like with dynamics too. So I'm just yep. sorry, sorry to interrupt, but like with your, like your ZMF stuff, the 6L6 or the Sennheisers sounds, I think, in some, most ways better than the KT88s. I like the KT88s more so with like harder to drive plant or magnetic headphones. For sure. Right, right, right. Um, I know that this is, most of us here are, are personal audio centric and it always seems curious to a lot of people, why do I put speaker binding posts on the back of it on, on most of my amps? You know, these, I hope that these amps last 50 years and you know in my own life in the last 20 years what I needed an amplifier to do has changed you know my what was my horn loaded speaker amplifier became my headphone amplifier became my office amplifier now I, I don't think I will ever make an amp that can do all of those things right on the you know, with just flip of a switch. Well, the Nautilus does it. All of these do it with a flip of a switch now. If you look at like the Ovation, the Rockwell, the Bigger Bend, and the Nautilus, you can actually deactivate speakers. But the idea is that I envision that all of our lives change. You know, and the reason why they started out on top plates was, you know, I was in college and out of college. And how do you have an audio rack as a young person with like your first apartment? You don't. You have a bookshelf. Or you have... Uh, your floor. desk, or or, or, or or you have your end table. Either way, adding jacks in the rear 
added three inches to the depth of an amp. And, you know, so there were real inspirational touch points of why things were, were they were the way they are. Um, I think that all of us in the course of our life, whether we're starting our careers, mid careers, or winding our careers down, change what we will be needing from an amplifier every five years. And so the idea of going, you can buy almost any reasonably efficient off the shelf speaker and power it with these amplifiers for me was a big, um, it was an extension of my own value set. I always want, you know, I have always have a s small set of bookshelf speakers in different places in my house. Cause if someone wants to try something or listen to it, or I want to make it a communal experience, I bring in speakers and being able to do that, having that as an option was important for me. It, it doesn't have to be there for you to use. It doesn't, you may never use it, but it's nice to know that you could. Well, and hopefully, and hopefully you do use it. So like a lot of the times we talk, you know, I mean, I think it came up on one of Tyler's last streams. Sometimes you can't have, I mean, you can't have speakers based on your living situation. Maybe you live in an apartment, you know, and it's just going to be too much. You're going to blow out the neighbor or whatever. So you have, but to your point, maybe as your living situation changes, but if you do have that amp, you can add that later down the road and add some speakers to that experience. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to, I'll just kind of show this one point and then I'm going to go in the room and show you these, these speakers I've had for like 10 years. I keep wanting to give them away to somebody, but they're so small and cute that like I end up wanting to keep them. Um, uh, does everybody here know the, the website Mattisound? No? Mm -hmm. Yes? No. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, like, Y'all yeah. got a new obsession. Go to Mattisound. Mattisound. Um, so, yeah. So it, it's a DIY speaker site, and they have um, back horn, back loaded uh, horn kits for Fostech drivers. So you can actually like get these single ended speaker boxes that you that they're they're all CNC cut. Literally, all you need is some wood glue and some clamps if you need it, or some weights just to hold the wood in place while it's gluing. And for like, you know, you can build a really high, really incredible speaker they have you know they have two-way systems three-way systems but I, i'm a big fan of full range drivers and you can get like a six inch fostec full range driver and it's going to give you that same kind of immediacy that headphones give you um and it'll run off of anything that a headphone amp would have produced for you these these speakers would end up running off of it really well and that's the kind of the fun stuff i want people like to think about is you know Go to Madison, buy their kit for two nineteen each, you know, with a four inch Fostec driver and it's back loaded and you build it yourself and you rhino line it or paint it as you see fit. And then you plug your amp into it. And it's like today I'm speakers to tomorrow. I'm not. Yeah, um, fair. yeah that's, that's cool. Great. Cool to build a new boat. And you can own and you get that. the pleasure of building it yourself, which makes it that much more cool. Yeah, kind of bottle head cracks or like the anything you build yourself is always going to make that extra special attachment. Yeah. Completely, and and so like Mattisound actually is a really good place to find those kinds of kits. Where I want, I, I'm a big DIY guy. I like everybody trying to have their hand at DIY at some level because uh, you learn more about what you like or don't like and there's pride of ownership because you, it came from you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. this is, this is the most DIY that I've gone. Uh, I put the, uh, handles on. Speaking of in, Disney. Uh, nice. <laughs> so, so, I'll, I'll so. be right back. I'm going to show you my little DIY project. I'll be right back. <laughs> that's, that's, that's funny. What, so what, what is that? What is Taryn? What is that? Is it a lightsaber? Yeah. It is a lightsaber, yeah. The the batteries are dead on it. Um, it uh, it sat in my closet at our old place for a while because my wife felt that our one bedroom didn't have enough room for my stuff. But now now that we have a two bedroom, well, nope. So now you can I, now now I can put it in. I just got to change the batteries though, which is like the extent of the DIY that I'll be doing. I love it. That's cool. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I love. I've always wanted a lightsaber, a functional well, working was, lightsaber. Yeah, it was like. 
two hundred and fifty dollars American, which is like Saber Forge. You gotta go to Saber Forge. Yeah, no, I, I saw it. I saw it. But like yeah, Saber Forge, the lights the lightsaber itself is like neat, but not worth the money. But the ex- the twenty minute experience that you get at Disneyland, I would highly recommend if you're a fan. That's that's cool. Yeah. And, and for it, little ones, definitely... like my daughter built hers. It's loves it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's cool. But Marcello yeah. and, and Tyler, Saber Forge, like sixty bucks, mm-hmm. you can get like your own. They have these sales for for lightsabers. And then you can get the the actual blade to be. I cut my blades down, and then I started offering like twenty four inch blades, so like a four year old can wield the twenty four inch blade without an issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, wait I a second. Like, Are we talking? This is a live blade, or is it a lightsaber? What is this? Thing? It's a light. It lights up. It's, it's a it's lightsaber with 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 a plastic. With the pla- tube. hard plastic. Yeah, hard plastic oh, tube I w- lights up, but you can you can get them shortened enough so that your daughter can wield it without too much mm-hmm. top weight on it. Gotcha, okay. And, and I think the Sabre ones, too, they actually have the impact plastic, right? Where you don't have to worry uh-huh. about it breaking if, you have, if you're have if you doing actual sword. Play. Same with the ones that, from Disney. You can do, like, they have that same, like, impact plastic. The Disney I ones are the nicest I've seen, and I own mm-hmm. four lightsabers. Yeah, they're they're surprisingly well built, and the TSA doesn't give you any issues with them either. So it's good to know how all right. old, how nerdy all of us are on this stream. I'll go show you the lightsabers. I have there's, panic. There's, did I you have see the guy panic. that made his own? Like, did you yeah, see the, the guy that did that the actual YouTuber? lightsaber out of plasma? Have you seen yeah, this? Yeah. The guy that he has like the battery pack thing, and it actually has like a four foot long like plasma blade that he can cut through steel and stuff with it. Granted, yeah. I wouldn't do that for at home because you'd probably cut your arm off before <laughs> sounds dangerous but, you know, sounds sorry, cool though just a diy let's do this <laughs> sure awesome. all right so my two diy projects that i still have kept i have a lot of pride in them they are not the last word in anything so let's just bear okay so um back when you couldn't get cigars from cuba i had friends that were stationed um at getmo and brought me cigars. And so I took one of the cigar boxes and I turned it into a a stereo speaker. So it's a tiny little cigar box, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, put put polyfill inside it. And these are called BMR speakers or BMR drivers. You can get these at Parts Express and they are a whopping eight bucks each, six bucks each. And they sound amazing. like. Don't knock it till you try it. Let's not talk smack. They actually sound really good. And then I put banana jacks in the rear. That's cool. And this is this was sat in my office for years as my like office speaker. And it's like fun. you know it's, it's it's not left and right you know, but this yeah. was like this was a solid like no one's gonna bother you for having this in your office. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's a fun cool. project it's a too. Piece too. Yeah. Right. The other one, uh, wood cabinet came from eBay. Right, and it's stacked that ply. It's stacked mm-hmm. plywood, and I think I spent like a hundred bucks to get these cabinets from eBay. Right, and then I put my own binding post from Parts Express on, and the driver is a four-inch four-inch driver for, from Foundtech, which was like thirty-five dollars each. So I think I'm into these for like two hundred bucks for the whole for the pair, and then I put grills on it because um, we all know people like to touch dome tweeters and, and, and crush dome tweeters and yep. crush four-year-olds especially yeah right and so or- you can't you can't you can't touch my driver and i you know i mean little you know i put little felt glides on the bottom so like it could be on top of my bookshelf That's and cool. for years and years and years i had a mogwai and two of these you know because I, I don't know what's wrong with my coworkers, but they come into my office and they they go, you know, and they touch the tube and they go, I burned my hand. Like, Why are you touching? I mean that glowing thing your... that you touched? You're like that what really hot that? glowing piece of glass. Hundred percent. Or they touched like they they, they I, I had these um, MTM speakers that I had built and they crushed the tweeter, and like getting the. Pulling the tweeter out that was like a compression fit tweeter to replace it got really old. And so this is the, you know, don't touch the tweeter, you know, just yes. guard. 
But all of that being said, the idea is just like, this is a fun project. You can turn things like mm -hmm. this into an expression of who you are and your own value set. And no, it is not the last word in anything, but it is, it's HD 600 good. Mm -hmm. Fair. Cool. So, That's cool. You know, and so you. So it is the last there's word. No, there's no way to say that like this wouldn't fit, that you don't have room to make this fit, you know. And there's there's a thousand other options just like it. And it's you scalable know. with your amps and stuff. For sure. I mean, like if you can afford a Nautilus, you shouldn't be running this. You should buy yourself some <laughs> yeah. like. You should buy some like Kef LS fifties or Falcons. You know, like okay. I I run Falcons with my own Nautilus. I think it sounds great. Yeah, yeah. You know. But, you know, though I've had many nicer speakers, I keep these examples because they actually mean something to me interpersonally. And I think that hopefully eventually all of us feel that same way about our gear, that there's certain things mm -hmm. that are just right. They may not be just right forever. And they may not be just right in all circumstances, but they become sort of an extension of who you are. And I hope that they, that, you know, they stay I have with that us. with these for sure like these are my first h 800s sdr modded i have like zmf pad other like i have random pads on them and stuff but like every time i go oh i should probably sell those i listen to them again and i'm like i can't sell them but then i also have this moment of like nostalgia where i'm like oh these are like the one of the first headphones that really just like you know like where it was like oh i get it now kind of you know with the audio file space yeah, that's what I get with the Red Zeros that I made in Rossin's lab. Um, and by made, I mean I'd, I'd mix the colors and pour it into a cup, and he did the rest. But uh, every time I, every time we're like, oh, we should probably sell these off, I'd find an excuse not to sell them. He sends them to me to demo. Uh, yeah, once once they've been on Tyler's head, they aren't sellable anymore. So <laughs> Exactly. True story. Have you seen my Stelias? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it, 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 is that the actual improvement in color that we were talking about? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. See, it, uh, it's lovely. No, yeah, I mean, at least it's should I should I show what a stock one looks like? Just yeah, for show the sake stock. Of... You, it'll show. You'll see exactly how much. And I use leather cleaner, so it actually did darken up with leather cleaner. So, but yeah, Thank like God. look at no, the difference. No, seriously, yours is actually a better color. Yeah, but yeah, because it it, it, it it does it ages and, and it gives it a nice like patina, right? Like it does have yep. that. It, you get that patina where it's this nice dark. Yeah, it's a fine leather. Mocha. Yeah, yeah, like a proper leather. And, and you know, initially, like I actually don't like the OG color until like, this. Now it's it's nice. I like it now. <laughs> are we allowed to has talk my beard smack oil at all? Or are we or we're not allowed to talk any smack, right? To, to me, you can talk as much back as you want. I'm, I have thick skin. Uh, I know, I mean, but, but Ter Terrence like the adult in the room, so I was asking for permission. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I'm the only one to drop a word that wasn't shoot on the stream, so I don't know if I'd be the adult on the stream. Cheese and but rice, Terrence. I would I would say talk smack as much as you want, but it is Marcello's house. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I just think uh, talk smack in a nice way. Well, no, I like... I, I, I think Focals are fantastic headphones. Um, I think the, the Stelia is better than the Utopia in a lot of ways. Oh, I agree except with that. For, except for the color, which looks like a bowel movement. I see. I don't see that. It looks more like <laughs> it looks more like copper to me, like a copperish. And I will, I, I, yeah, it looks so much better in person too. Like it on does. The camera and in picture. Yeah. It really, like. It does get better in person, like. But but if they offered you, if they said that a, a Stelia was two hundred dollars more for a Utopia Black, wouldn't you pay black, it? Black, black. Well, <laughs> I, I I just want the sound signature of the of the Stelia inside the Utopia with it open because like the Stelia sound signature is like primo. I I really dig it, and if I could have that in an open headphone, oh forget about it. That'd be that'd be money for me. I just put it on tube amps. <laughs> that does all I put amps. everything on tube amps, yeah. It's always <laughs> that, better that, on tube touché. amps. Touche. Yeah, the sun is like being weird, so I'm like going bright in the dark. That's all right. It's all good. Um, okay, so real quickly here, let me just check on the chat and make sure we're not leaving anybody hanging. Uh, thank you guys for hanging with us. 
Um, looks like everybody's just chiming in and listening, really, so that's cool. Um, all right, so we'll, we're going to get into questions in a minute, guys. So I'm sure many of you will have questions for Justin around the new amp. Let's, let, if we don't have any more design stuff, let's get into audible impressions because I think that's important to tell the story of this amplifier. At least my initial first couple weeks or so um, that I've had it, and then Justin, maybe some of yours. And then we can um, get into some questions and also talk to um, uh, Taryn and you about this uh, new partnership you have with the new amp that you guys built. So, well, can I can I lead off of sort of just my thoughts on this? Yeah, go for it. For a second, go for it. So, um, as much as I am a horn horn loving speaker guy, I also <laughs> really really love full range drivers. I love big honking Tenoy Audio Nirvana full range, you know big drivers um i think that the uh i think that the rockwell is sort of that full range driver presentation it's not heavy in the mids and it's not heavy it's not heavy anywhere but there is a trueness to the sound that feels lifelike in a different way you know i, I like a lot of tonal i like a lot of texture typically but this is sort of a lighter gentler hand um i would as i've said sort of on some of the forums that i i liken it somewhere between a uh, bigger ben and a pendant had a love child um you know whereas the pendant gets there with a little bit of feedback the the um rockwell does it through the absence of of other choices you know, it's really using the tube to get there first. It's it's like the ingredient choice. The primary ingredient in the Rockwell is its sonic signature is actually the use of that triad. Where I would say like in the bigger Ben, it is that the big power transform, the, the, the big output transformers, uh, their uh, frequency extension is so evident in the bigger Ben and in the Nautilus. You know, that they, they feel like they can pull you deeper than you would have thought the headphone was capable of. I think that the um, the Rockwell is a, a more even-handed, natural or live experience. That is, the live experience piece speaks to me, what you just said, because that is something, every time I listen to this amp that resonates with me, I feel as if I'm listening to a live concert experience. It sounds supernatural, like um, just, okay, so I did a lot of A-B comparing versus the pendant over this last week specifically. The first week I had it, I just had fun with it, listened. I listened to it quite a bit with my um, Def Tech Mythos 4 Tower speakers, and there's a really good synergy between those two. It sounds magnificent with those speakers. Um, but I would say that when I really started to get into listening and A-B comparing versus the pendant, the, the natural presentation of the music is just really apparent. And with the pendant, I feel like there's a little bit more energy and emphasis with strings, horns, um, you know, they, they, they sit forward in the mix of it. And with this amplifier, doesn't matter what headphone I'm listening to, it, it, it is more balanced sound across the spectrum, and there's a wider soundstage and a more open sounding soundstage as well. Um, and I really enjoy the pendant soundstage. So that's saying a lot because I'm a fan of the pendant soundstage, but this soundstage is even more open sounding to me. It puts vocals a little bit further away in a good way though, not too far. Like just the stage is more circular, like you're in a live venue, which I really enjoy when you're listening to headphones because I'm a speaker guy first and foremost and I came to headphones obviously after my daughter was born so I'm always trying to find headphones that sound speaker like and amplifiers that make them sound more speaker like and this is an amplifier that does that for me so I really enjoy enjoy um, that 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 audible sense from this amp because I do agree with that it definitely sounds very lifelike or a concert like uh, can I just answer Jordan's question real quick? Yeah, go for it. Uh, it has three different copper uh, gauge wires in it. It has nickel uh, in it. Uh, that output transformer that we use is actually uh, really, really special. 
and um, without getting too much more into its secret sauce, but it's uh, it's an involved process, and I wish I could get them done quicker, but I can't. Um, and that is because they are actually more technically sophisticated than just a lump of, you know, I, I, I when I ordered it because the transformer winder is well known, um, you know he. he he, he is a very, very experienced person. And I started asking questions about how to make it more special. And he started telling me some of the things that are already included in it. And I, I had originally gone after big core, Mongo, Mongo go big core, big core, no distortion, no distortion, good. Um, his answer was infinitely <laughs> more sophisticated and thoughtful than mine. That's funny. Hey, there's another question for you too. Um, since we since we took that one, let's take Elnrix real quick. I'm gonna add it to the broadcast. He says, "How do you handle keeping phase correct in your amps? Is there a need somewhere in the circuit to invert anywhere? I've seen some mm -hmm. amps. It's not. Invert. It's not. It's it, a push pull amplifier is invert. The, all right. So all of my amplifiers are are class A. Perfect. So that's the that's the reason. In general. Uh, do you have customers in Europe? I do. Um, sort of one in... Uh, and what about power differences? So uh, we have invested a fairly good chunk of developed money. We have some transformers that will do both voltages. You just wire them differently. Um, I... Back to Terrence's point about people... Um, struggling sometimes with voltages being set for the right country. Uh, I don't really believe in switches in my own amplifiers. There's, I think, typically only two, maybe three. You know, there's like an input switch, and if I can get away with getting rid of an input switch, I would prefer it. Uh, and there's a power switch. Uh, everything else is meant to be sort of an always-on, use-it kind of question because... Um, I worry that that switches fail and switches can be misused and create their own problems. So we generally wire them up for the country of voltage that they are. Very cool. Yeah, Stefano from um, from the forum and from the Discord, I think picked up a Mogwai uh, from you, and he's in France. So mm -hmm. so you definitely have customers in in Europe. Um, let's see. Let's go back to the Audible stuff, and then we're going to talk. We'll talk about this new partnership and new amp that's um, being released. So I'm trying to think of what else audibly I wanted to cover. So I think the main things were the more natural sound, the better, more open sounding soundstage with more depth to it, larger imaging, which I think comes, in when I say larger imaging, larger actual images. The vocalist sounds bigger, um, the instruments sound bigger. And I feel like that's also some of the same qualities that I heard with the Nautilus. And I, and I know that's probably, there's probably a scientific reason behind the iron that you're using that is driving a larger image in the vocalists and instruments. But everything feels taller and sounds larger than, say, like a Pendant or a Mogwai OG. So um, that is something I noticed immensely. I think that the power, the power ratings you spoke to earlier... You know, I think this amp is between what three and five watts, or somewhere around there, with these power tubes. Uh, well, I will tell you, it, it's three watts. Um, three watts. But but how I measure power and how uh, industry standards may measure it are different. I, I would like to say I I generally run probably thirty to forty percent more conservative. Um, I believe in it. RMS means that it needs to be able to do that until hell freezes over, not being sustained for three seconds or 10 seconds. I started seeing that lately. It's a, a curious, curious idea. Um, well, so our, our, our power, our power, our, our power ratings are different. I will say one of the things I was thinking about why, why, um, why the, um, Rockwell may feel more lifelike or true to touch. I think it's, you know, that the, there are, the voltage swings are less significant in the Rockwell. We're running lower voltages. And I think that there is going to be, 
it, it will, though less powerful, it also may feel um, uh, you know power coming power, power being used can can make things feel uh, both very close. Typically, also can add scale on big passages. Um, for the bigger Ben, power plus big transformers equals intimacy. Um, I have always said that I thought that uh, headphones lose when it comes to soundstage. And, you know, in, in a typical sense, I think headphones lose when it comes to soundstage, but win when it comes to detail retrieval and, and intimacy. And so for my amps, that had always been that I wanted that intimacy to be as close as possible with as much weight as possible. So like when you go Mogwai SC to Bigger Ben or Nautilus, it's like moving closer to the performer. Whereas I would say with the pendant and with the uh, Rockwell, it pulls you back more to a, to um, just past orchestra, you know, so that you get more soundstage. Um, but it's not as visceral. So it, it, it conveys that larger soundscape and maybe it feels more proportionate as a result, you know? So if you've ever been, you know, six feet to 10 feet from a performer, there's that feeling of like, you know, I am the mic. <laughs> I want to be there. I want, I want to, I, I can feel the energy of that foot moving, or I can feel as that hand is moved across the fret or moved across the wood of the guitar. There's that energy, that reverberation. And I think that that's like a bigger band, Nautilus, Mogwai SC, Bastion sound per se. Whereas um, hearing the totality of the orchestra at level um, is better served by the rock one. I agree. Yeah, yeah. That's that's probably the, one of the biggest noticeable things for me with this amplifier versus even just the audio memory off the Nautilus and then the time I had with the Mogwai is the staging. If you like a vaster, you know, more... I don't know, I guess vaster, wider and deeper soundstage, this amp provides that in a very, but in a way without it sounding unnatural. So I like it a lot. Um, there was, I mean, I went through several different tracks. I would say the the one thing about the power piece, I think that, so even using the HE6, like I think the HE6 just performs the best off of KT88 just for that extra power and drive. Um, the HE6 still sounded really good with this amp, but I think that extra impact that you just discussed that you get with the more power maybe flushes them out a little bit better with, say, like the Nautilus or the or the Mogwai SE or something along those lines. But the soundstage that you get with the Rockwell and just the rich, natural-sounding tonality is so impressive. So you, you've done exceptional with this amp, to my ears anyways, so... Oh, El Elric, Elric asked a question that sort of, I don't use switches because switches fail. Um, the feedback question, I know that it would be really great to include options of how much feed, you know, is feedback present? How much feedback is present? Uh, is it defeatable? Um, I am not a circuit board designer. I, you know, you'd want servos or relays to do those kinds of switches. And I don't believe in use of microprocessors and tubes. Uh, microprocessors and tubes is like putting an in Intel processor on top of a tadpole. It just doesn't go right. It's, 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 there's, there's no version that I think that that makes any sense in, an, in the natural world. Um, you know, tube amps are dis distortion producing devices. You know, good tube amps produce distortion that is predictable and pleasing to our ear. Um, and we, and that's why we choose it. Um, but to, to make a tube amp do all of those things so versatilely, I think that you have to use computer controls. I've seen it done with, with rotary switches, but um, I worry that rotary switches may fail and present its own problems. And so you know, the better way to do it would be to have it, you know, manage with a microprocessor switching these things out. And if I wanted to do that, I'd be a, well, I don't know that I could do that, but if I, 
if it were to be done, you'd have to have the sort of sophistication of a bigger company that can do microprocessor controls to manage uh, these basic ideas of switching in different resistors and capacitors for the feedback options. And I, that's, that's not how I envision a tube amp to be used. And I don't see those designs being true timeless pieces. Kind of lacking sort of some simple. purity kind of thing. Yes, completely. Like, uh, uh, here's an example. Um, if you had, like, I, I, I used to love Ford trucks, and I had a 67 Ford F100. It had um, a 351 Cleveland in it. And uh, nice. loved it. But it also was carbureted, and there were moments... You know, I, I put on an Edelbrock carburetor, and, and it ran pretty good. Uh, would it have run better and been more reliable and more predictable and easier to use? It might have lived with me longer if I had put a fuel injection system on it. For sure. <laughs> um, would it have lost some of what made it so very interesting in the first place? Je ne sais quoi. Yeah. And so <laughs> that's... From my choice, at least, choosing, you know, my company, you're signing on to that those design decisions are important, you know, regardless of circuit or, or implementation. You know, it's like, no, we do it the simple, you know. Here's a better example. Uh, I tell people, and Marcello's heard me say it before, what's the secret to home cooking? Butter. What's, yeah, the, secret butter to re what's butter. the secret to restaurant cooking? Butter. It's not fresh food. Salt. Salt. <laughs> yeah. You know what's the it's secret true. to really good food? Butter and salt. <laughs> Sounds yes. good. Sounds if good you can get salted butter. Salt you can. Can. Oh, and you sure can. Salted too. sweetened butter. Salted yeah. sweetened butter. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. So, I mean, <laughs> there, are, there are other, like, we can point. Uh, Aurus, A U R S, does a great job of those kinds of feature sets, and they're they're successful, and they have an identity that makes sense for them, and and I applaud them for it. It is just not an identity that I can embrace for myself. That's fair. Do what you do, and it makes it that's yours. I mean, this I love that. Stick to doing what you love and the way you like to design and build and. My gosh, there's so many of us that love your amps anyways, just the way you're doing it. So you're not, you're doing it, you're doing something right, man. So keep it up. Well, well, the, the fun, and, and I mean, I think he brought up a good point. Like, you know, could it be more interesting and have, and, and be more tailorable? Yes, it could be, honestly. Um, and and I, I applaud someone for, for bringing that up. Um, I like the fact, though, that to fix my amplifier, you need, a soldering iron and a voltmeter. Yeah, that's cool. Nothing else on there that's rocket science. Um, you know, but there are limits to that, and, and these are what we sign on for. Yeah, well said. Um, audible impressions. Anything else you think we should cover for as far as audible impressions? I had no issues with any headphones. Obviously, driving it, you have multiple taps available to you. Um, so the Verte. And now the Stelia are my noise sniffers, really, because the Verte just, I mean, with the Beryllium Verte's picks up sensitive. everything. And the same thing with the uh, Beryllium driver in the um, Stelia. So, I mean, you know, with those hum pots are just, I know I just keep talking about it, but they're just brilliant, man. I think when I, when I first talked to you on the phone, I think it was like the first week I was listening to them, I'm like, dude, these hum pots are awesome. Just because you have the capability of even just making little you micro both turns. Both pots at the same time. Yeah, so the right side affects the right power tube. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the left side fixed or the left channel and the right channel basically is what you're hearing. And so um, you're just making micro adjustments, like millimeters, just to get the hum reduced on each side. And I mean, it works. It really works. And so, like I said earlier, I was listening to the Verity at 300 ohms on Justin's tube amp one of Justin's tube amps in a way that I have never quite heard it before being able to reduce the tube hum because you know more power you get more noise is just it's relative mm -hmm. you know um and this 
was brilliant. Like, I mean, sure, there's still gonna be noise. I don't any any measurement people out there, you're still gonna get some audible noise. Anytime you have tubes, you're gonna get it. Like it's unavoidable. But for me, I I prefer and value the richer, more lifelike tonality, the tube harmonics, the um, the just the just the, the the way that tube amps um, image and basically sound compared to the exacting precise nature of a solid state amp i like solid state amps too but i would prefer to have a little bit more distortion and noise or humming from a tube than just have it be so exacting to where it kind of changes the music listening experience for me um One i mean it Go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry, may, may I interject something? Just yeah, something. sure. So, all you know, all of my amps, um, with the exception of the pendant, the pendant is a has a different sonic signature, but all of my amps are zero feedback. And triode uh, amplifiers are have very low dampening factor, and so if you take a, a, an amp that has a low dampening factor and give it so it's high voltage low dampening uh you are going to have dynamic headphones feel very very immediate you know i don't though i have heard and you know i i love the lcd 2s uh clothes that i have and i i love my ether 2s to be honest with you i thought they actually sounded really amazing with the rockwell uh i would say though that the Rockwell is best suited for dynamic headphones, from my perspective, at least. I agree. And that the lack of dampening, though, gives them the the bass is going to be less visceral for sure, yeah. but it's going to feel faster on the touch. Yeah, I agree. Less of a less of a hit, less of an impact, but it's quick. It, I mean, I agree, hundred percent. Well said. And I and I felt that my favorite headphones. I was going to actually get to that next. Were mostly the 300 ohm headphone variants but actually the Stelia sounded pretty damn good too I just think I dropped down because the Stelia is what 32 ohms I think I dropped down to 16 or 8 and I was really happy with that um, and then the clear MG is what 55 Taren correct me if I'm wrong and I think I just dropped down yep. maybe to 32 and I was really stoked on that but the I listened to the the planners I listened to are the HE6 and the Rad Zero. Actually, the Rad Zero sounded pretty epic with it, though. I will give it that. The Rad, but the Rad Zero sounds so good, just with so many different amps. Yeah. So, but I do think I preferred the dynamic drivers, um, and especially the 300 ohm variants, most. Actually, can, can I jump in real quick and Taryn? Kaskufu, Kaskufe. Yeah, jump in there, buddy. You're there to look at. Don't speak. <laughs> Jesus. My you know, you're, here, you're here for the eye candy. You're the eye candy, sir. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, Kareem? Welcome to the party, Sheldon. What's up, dude? You guys are. Hey, you, you made it just in time, man. Thanks for joining. What up, Martin? How you doing, buddy? Yeah, what are you doing awake, man? Martin, what time is it right now where you're at? Holy moly! He, he had good a to dream see about you, salty, buttery popcorn, and and it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Ray Rod, what's up, dude? Welcome, man. Who else did we miss? JTB, anybody else slide in there that we haven't seen? Raz Q, what's up, man? All right. Wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add one thing. One Before you get to your point, I'm going to just close this down. Yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 I did intermittent fasting for all of today till just before this meeting, and then I had a little bit of a chicken breast. Damn. Today was my cheat day, so I'm, I'm full as fudge. I did my 16 so, hours, but that's like that's a long fast. Well, no, but I, I'm waiting for when when we're all done talking. I'm hoping to make it to Ruth Chris and get oh. myself a, a fillet with Bernays sauce. That, that, sounds, they, they so that sounds so good. That sounds so. Though I said salt and butter, I forgot that Bernays sauce is actually a separate category. Yes, that sounds so yeah. good. Tyler, what were you gonna say? That dude. Now uh, I'm hungry. Now I'm hungry. I, know. I I just had a bunch of pizza. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I had a bunch of oh. dish. I, before I can't wait to show, but I can't then, wait to eat. But now I'm hungry. This. Now I want a steak. I don't know. Yeah. I've, been, I've been craving steak like crazy lately. But uh, Rad Zeros. So a thing that I found with the Rad, I don't have the Rad Zeros anymore. I had to send them off today, actually. So uh, I'm a little bit sad. 
God, those are those, really those ones were so pretty too. Yeah, those are gorgeous. Um, very gorgeous. Big big fan of that one. But uh, Rad Zeros though, and Taryn and you also, Marcello, can speak on this too. Um, but like, I put those in with the soon to be talked about amp, and it blew my mind how good those were. Like the like peanut butter and chocolate, like Dynamics. you know whatever your synergy. Yeah, like everything about them was just like. Like that combo, especially like what it, what uh, taps did you have on that amp? Because I don't remember. I think this one's eight eight and one hundred, I believe. Okay, that's cool. One. And it sounded fantastic on both. That both, was the crazy yeah. part to me. Like yeah. it was. You get two different like, experiences though, right? Like you get yeah, a more dynamic you know, one off the hundred, right? Like it's a more mm -hmm. punchy sound. Yep. Uh, and, and then the the low Z was a little more relaxed, but a little more like kind of like floating around. You know, you can drink some bourbon or whatever and chill out a little, little um, better staging but the, too but it sounds like fantastic the, it, the yeah. rad rad zeros with the excuse me amp that shall not be named currently until later <laughs> well, was, I mean, like, it, it can be named there's just no name so. yeah we just haven't figured out yet well, but uh it, it i mean so and taryn has had the same ex well a similar experience I, I was telling taryn i was like dude when you get this rad zero it up because it is ridiculous yeah and so I, taryn what were your thoughts like i mean to me it was it just it was that that thing that just was synergy right that that when and people talk about synergy in their system you know like oh you have to find the synergy. that was one of the first times i've had something that instantaneously made me go oh this is synergy if that makes sense yeah well i mean like truthfully it's been it was a while no, it's lie to me rad lie zero. to me just Rad Zero, because uh, I had the Kenzie, I had the Kenzie on my desk for a while, and I was uh, one to one impedance matching that with the Radiance, and mm -hmm. that was just. I'm Canadian. I like bass. It's uh, you all know, about that Android, bass. All that about Android that bass. proved that scientifically that Canadians like bass. Sean Olive, Canadians like bass. That's just the way it is. And the, so the Rad Zeros keeps I had them warm them in the, the winter. Yeah, I had them on the stand, and I just wasn't listening to them. And then uh, the new app showed up, and I threw them on, and I've just I've been using that for the last week and a half, um, and like I've grown a thicker neck because of uh, the work that I do, um, and uh, it's very easy to keep on, and just like that, the tune that the Red Zero has combined with just the euphonic sound coming off of that amp is incredible it's did you have the KT, say, kt88s in there with it yeah the kt88s oh dude yeah, yeah. 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 i missed oh. the kt88s dude i'm the not gonna lie to you i'm the I'm, slam some more just yeah, the K slam of those kt88s yeah with the jupiter caps too so it's Whew. yeah so yeah, let's I, talk I let's talk about this lot, let's man. talk like, about this amp I, we I, segue I have a into suggestion it. i just i thought about it ruling because the Lord of the Rings, the the one ring to rule it to rule them all was called the ruling ring, if I remember correctly, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Ruling, yeah. The ruling, ruling. Yeah. I love that it's, movie. It's better. That's, all of them. Better than some of the other names that we've come up with. So. <laughs> so Tyler, do you have do you have a copy of that amp to show the 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 group? Yeah, heavy boy. Let me uh, put. I'm gonna put you front and center here, so you can have the whole stage. We take a look at it. Oh man, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. So you got a high Z and a low Z. You still got an Alps volume control or volume pot. You've got the beautiful headphones.com logo. And then you, those, you got the 6L6GCs currently in there right now, right? Yes, sir. And then, um, so, okay, sweet. I love it, man. I think it, I like the all black. I think you should. The name should come with something similar for, like maybe something all black. Oh, like Nux. You ever heard the name Nux? Nux, like the Canucks. Or well, Nux. Nux is the god of um, night. Uh, yeah. Mythology. Something. Right. Something that hits hella hard, and I like darkness. Like something like I don't know. So the darkness. Nux. That's what. Nux yeah. Is. It's like the, that's cool. The, that's the god of that, night or darkness. Because that thing. I mean, yeah, that's a sweet looking amp. So, and when it's when are you guys when are you guys thinking you guys will start maybe uh, putting this up on the website for sale for all the potential interested buyers? Well, Tyler is going to take some pictures of it. 
Okay. Um, get us some proper get us some proper product photos. Okay. And uh, some other, nope. other no pressure, Tyler. That, yeah. Um, and yeah, then, I haven't done product uh, photos for it yet. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he so took a beautiful they're, they're, one though. He did take a beautiful one, the Rod Zero. He he did. Yeah, right. he did. <laughs> so uh, Justin's website is all black. Ours is like white, white with white. a grayish background. Yep. So uh, the dark lifestyle photos just don't work because uh, you got all white product photos and you got that one photo there, right? Um, so well, I, I tried I, to I put. Can... I, I was gonna say, I, I, once upon a time, I tried having white photos. And it was yeah. like, it, it didn't work. Yeah. Well, the uh, like, nice thing about the black stuff is that you don't have to spend all your time trying to remove shadows and everything, right? Um, the white photos are such a pain. Such a pain. And uh, Tyler can attest to it. And I've, I've done it myself when we were doing products on Amazon because Amazon requires the photos to take up a certain amount of space with a white background. And yeah. <clears throat> It's it's not something that like even if you paid me money that I would want to do, um, unless I really really enjoyed it. So, it's... white background shots are very um, in the air. they they take a lot of lighting. Believe it or not, since mm -hmm. I have a studio Lots and I do I do this for a living, but then also you also need a lot of black cards everywhere to reduce light from bouncing around in order for you to remain and uh, keep texture of the products otherwise there's so much light bouncing around it can just become very easy to blow out everything and not have texture or three-dimensionality to the photo so you're almost using as much black fill cards as you are utilizing lights so yeah it's a it's complex but sometimes you can make it easier too with just one or two lights yeah yeah so for the people who think it's as easy as just pressing a button and the product it's goes not. up and it's it's done. Yeah, it's uh, no, uh, still still have to do the copy, um, all of that stuff, and nail down the timelines here with Justin. But uh, look for that later this summer to uh, very go cool for pre sale. That's what I was going to ask. That was my next question. Is it going to be a pre order process, basically? Yeah. Excuse me. Bless you. Bless. So you, okay. so I so swear. it will be a okay. pre pre order process. So that's cool. Awesome, man. So you'll probably blast out emails once that 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 happens. I imagine. Um, yeah, I mean, we've we've been known to send an email every now and then. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just once every once in a while. Hey, Mocha Mark, thank you for the super chat, brother. Always appreciate the support, and that's a great question for Justin. I'll pop it up on the screen. He's asking, um, is there room? I, I and I assume you're speaking about the the Rockwell with this question. Um, is there room for a pre-out? Uh, would that not be possible slash elegant for this design? It, all things on heaven and well, many things on heaven and earth are possible to some improbable. Um, it, it's a it, it's a difficult amp to build. It takes a lot of bench time. It nearly takes the same amount of bench time in its production as a Nautilus. Um, both because the hum pots just had a great deal of complexity to the wiring. Um, we we actually use these like I, I call them our highways, but we have these Teflon coated um, fiberglass tubes that are flexible, and so we run you know, like ten wires into this tube, and so all you see is this gray tube, but really there's ten different like wires that are going on this like highway to get to where they need to be. Um, Adding a pre would just, it would add a degree of complexity to an already tight space back there. I don't see it logistically possible. Um, the the real um, magic of this amp is I got the thing to fit on the same <clears throat> footprint as a bigger Ben and an Ovation and not look like it was shoehorned in there. The truth is it was shoehorned in there with like Crisco. Um, <laughs> you know, it was a violent experience. It was a violent birth. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, I mean it's it's pretty. I, I'm it's visualizing pretty... now, and it's awkward. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> have you, have, have you seen, ever seen Ace Ventura have you seen coming out of a down? rhino? Uh... <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, you know, it, it, it's really elegant, but I mean, it, it it's very dense, and that density, um, 
I don't know that I can get a good outcome, and I, I, I'm not sure that I'm prepared to try. I and got a good I, outcome this time, and I'm, I'm calling it good. You know? I, I will say, I will say too, um, Mocha Mark, because I know Mark Mocha Mark, and I think I know some of his listening uh, preferences, and he likes a bit more slam in the lower end. I will say that I, okay, so I'm running with with it now, the DefTech Mythos 4, which don't have huge drivers, but they've got like, I feel like four drivers and two tweeters per speaker. I could be wrong on that. At least one tweeter and four driver speakers, I think, per, per tower. And the sound is awesome with them. And if you need the extra sub bass, that, those speakers need it anyways because they don't have large drivers. You could add a sub into the system and you have a complete sounding system in my personal. And, and I have a large listening is, room. Is Mocha Mark um, more desirous of two channel? He well, he does both, but I I know he listens to I believe some reggae and some stuff that has some more bass centric music with it. So I think maybe that's why he was wondering if a preamp that maybe could well, power a little more. So I'm going to put a shout out before. So, um, Taryn, I would love after I sit, after I do a little shout out to share sort of the design process that we went through with the amp and why things are special about it. If that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Cool. That's... Um, my shout out goes to this. If y'all collectively um want a two-channel speaker two-channel speaker amp uh you know two two two-channel speakers i tell this to anybody listening the the zoo omen dirty weekends are the best value in audio when it comes to speakers and you like reggae completely you like reggae thousand dollars they are magic to your door and you know i just like having dirty weekends so if you if you if you pair it with like you know either the bigger Ben or the Rockwell, I think that you're going to find that you have that air and space while still having a speaker that will literally blow you the out the room and make you woodchuck, feel chuck, could, chuck, like could, like you woodchuck. like you stepped into some really high end stuff without without breaking your neck to do it. Okay, I'm so gonna, Tyler, can you? Can, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was gonna step in with a quick shameless plug. Um, uh -huh. There's two brothers, two brothers in Washington, who uh, they just make uh, powered speakers, powered uh, monitors. They have two speakers. Uh, company is called Vanitu. Um, okay. Yeah. They make right Vanitu, Vanitu yep. Transparent Zero, and the Transparent One Encore, and uh, they just use uh, Class D amps in their speakers. Um, and so I've, I've got transparent zeros in my house and um, I was listening the other day and my wife was like, can you turn the sub down? And I didn't have the subwoofer yeah. plugged in. It was just, <laughs> just the speakers, those, those things. Like, if you, if you want bass, that's, that's where it's at. I, I don't know what they are in us dollar, probably like three, a couple hundred bucks, something yeah. silly like that. Yeah um so the, the, those guys are those guys are great um really really easy to deal with too if you're only looking for powered stuff for stuff that needs a little more juice uh, so hopefully we answered good. hopefully we answered that question for mocha mark so let's show us some more of that amp tyler i want to see some more of this sweet beast so the the partnership with with amps and sound and headphones you know, we started out with a great conversation and kind of moved forward. And, you know, the Mogwai OG uh, has been out a long time and is a really good amplifier. But for the headphone community, it had some features that just didn't make sense. And it was one of my oldest amplifiers. Uh, and so, you know, binding posts don't make sense. Jacks in the rear don't make sense. Uh, and it was a little too too compact, I think, to be honest with you. And so, you know, Taryn was, I, Taryn and I had a nice sit down conversation, and we're able to talk about some really, you know, value propositions that made sense for the headphone community. And this is what we started sketching with. So things that are, I think are really important to make note of when you look at it. Um, Tyler, do you mind pointing at it for a few minutes? Your, 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 no, I meant, I meant you could point your, 
or hold it. You have those guns. I mean, <laughs> look at those, look at those arms, arms man. He's he's gonna yeah, have a room call. Is, my room is filthy. I don't know if I want to show people how effed up my room is that, right that, now. That's, that, that's what will get you. Um, so this chassis is actually bigger than a Mogwai OG. The reason for that is to give you know the. The ovation was a better idea than the Encore in that the ovation had the space to give all the same functions that the Encore did, but do it in a more mature conceptualization. The headphones amp is a more mature conceptualization of the things that made the Mogwai special. So by making it physically bigger, it just feels less pressured and th more thoughtful. You know, everything's got a little bit more space between it and the next component. You know, I envision that anybody who uses this amp is going to invest in buying a decent power cord and is going to use good interconnects. You know, and, and one of the points is if you notice, the RCAs are way in the back and really far away from the power switch, from the, from yeah, the, smart. From the IEC jack. Mm -hmm. And the power switch is right next to the IEC jack so that there's no spurious, you know, points of it, introducing AC into the audio signal, right? But if you see that you got enough room that you're going to be able to put a big Wattgate-based power cord there without any issue. And if you see the distance between the RCA and the transformers, you have that big landing pad there. So you can put big honking cables or have cables drape over in a way that makes sense, and it, it doesn't feel doesn't feel rushed or pressured. It, it felt like a really more mature distillation. And then the quarter inch jacks on the side, you know, could we have put them somewhere close to the front? Maybe, but the whole point wasn't about that. It was giving everybody a good place to be, and having it accessible on the side made a lot of sense for most people who were using it. And it was far enough away that you didn't feel like your hand was going to touch a tube, which was sometimes the you know a concern for people with the with the Mogwai. You know you you have a really good distance between the first power tube and the volume pot. You have really good distance between where your headphone jack is and the volume pot. What you're getting here is the very very best uh, ideas that the Mogwai ever had. You have our biggest best most isolated power transformers you have are very special output transformers you know all done here in california um you know we're using jupiter caps it's a single-ended design you know you're still getting the big tube sound from this from the single input tube which is the 6sl7 but what you're getting is it's actually going to be shipping with kt88s it's going to be shipping with the big monster tubes you know, so for people who needed to be quiet enough for the Verite uh, or the HD800, but with enough slam to push around the HE6, I'm not saying just use the HE6. I'm talking about push it around. This is a really good choice. You know, and what I like about it, though, is that it doesn't feel cluttered. I know that that may seem really silly, but... You know, for me, the big takeaway, having built a lot of these different amps over the years, is the fact that it's not cluttered actually makes me feel like it's a more grounded sound. Tyler, you look very cool. You How are your arms pose. feeling, you, you Tyler? Like the, you like the you like the pose for the camera. We, 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 He's we, doing great. We that He's doing a good job. I'm not gonna lie, this thing's heavy. <laughs> yeah, so I was gonna heavy. say that, that that's not a light amp to be doing that for as long as you did. Great work, man. Yeah. Uh, I will say so off to this oh, I guess I'll show you guys my messy ass room god dang it my, my, uh, come on camera there we go um, I was going to say so when I I'm actually listening this way right um, now you guys know my secret sauce of my pictures hold on Black let me let me blow board. up let me blow up your screen real quick buddy <laughs> hold on there we go um, black cardboard and, and, and clamps uh, but no um, so this is how I was set on my desk when I'm listening with it, and it's perfect because the volume's here, so it's like right, you know, here's well, you guys can see it. So, mouse, keyboard. So I literally just move my hand over. Boom. There's my volume control. There's the the headphone inputs. Um, it's easy, right? Like I just grab my 
HD 100 input and not lose my thing here. But it just, you know, boom. It just works. It's fantastic. And it's easy to have. Like that's like, It's like perfect for the right-hand side um, of my desk. I Granted, if it's on the left-hand side, it might be a little more difficult. But I think it actually looks really cool this way as well. Um, and this is another way to put it. If it was on, say, your left-hand side, is you put it this way. So you're still not worried about hitting the, the tubes, but you still have full access to your um, your amp. You just might have to deal with running your cables up and along the way that way. Um, but if it was on the left-hand side, it would be not as big of a deal this way. So it's actually pretty great for ergonomics, between, no matter which one, side one you the, pick. One of the, the long time ago, I used to run much smaller feet, and I went for these big, chunky feet um, because it lets me drape cables underneath my the amps. Yeah. So you can run either a power cable or your interconnects or your headphone cable because you have about half an inch of clearance from the bottom of the amp to the to the top surface that you have the amp placed on, and that that's not actually done by accident. It's actually meant to give you a place to like run things and have a path for it. And the color is custom, by the way. It, yes, it it's very nice. I'm not. Yeah, I really like the color on it. Um, like, get those! I gotta get that those veins to pop. You know, like there you go, there you go. <laughs> it, it, it was meant um, to, if, if I remember correctly, we were trying to go for a color that looked very HD 800 S. So I, I, I went and had my HD 800 S's uh, color matched, and so the wood on the side has that same sort of, um, it, you know, it's not even a luminescence. You know, it's it's not reflecting light; it's glowing the light. It's diffusing the light, I should say. You know, so it it, it almost absorbs oh, light on. and and and, and uh, diffuses it to some degree. You know, so it doesn't have a high degree of re reflectivity, but it does look like yeah. it glows. And so it has sort of that velvet soft feel to it if you're looking at it from a distance. So yeah, like that's me kind of getting it right under. So I have my light shining right on it now. You can kind of see what you're talking about, Justin. Where it has that glow without having it be super reflective. It has like it actually has a glow to it rather than a. Um, it's like a matte super, black almost. Mm -hmm, exactly. Well, so it, it was interesting. So we, when we took it to now get I'm all color blown matched, out. I did. When we took Sorry, it to get I, a I, color match, they 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 said that the the color original color was essentially a plastic. It, it was a based off of a plastic paint, and so then we had to match it to a lacquer, reformulate it for a lacquer for the wood. So it it was an interesting process just to get to get something close to that HD eight hundred. Um, when you grab the bar, the the, the yolks of the HD eight hundred, it's the same um, mm -hmm. luminescence to yeah. it. It's very cool. It's really I'm, nice. I'm super excited about this partnership between you guys because you guys are both just awesome companies. And I mean, this is an awesome product that's, I think, I mean, I, I listened to the Mogwai OG for a couple months and I know there's some differences with this unit, but I love the Mogwai OG, you know, and so this is promising the same kind of sound, but you have the Jupiter caps, which is a step up even from what I heard. I, I just think this is going to be a winner for for both of you guys this is going to be a solid amp that a lot of people are going to really love well and the, the truth is that the the mogwai is off our site at this point for good reason i think that the so much of what i learned in this is better suited to the headphones camp and so that's where it's available you know i again i know it sounds stupid i love the spacing on it you know i love the physical layout it really lends itself to being both feeling higher value but also not feeling phrenogenic you know there there are i'm going to show you guys uh a little bit later something no one's seen yet and it's super cool but it's 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 more compact and it's a different feel to it this has a much more <clears throat> mature feel to it I mean, audiophiles outside of people who wear stacks are very aesthetic people. Yeah. <laughs> so, so keeping things clean is it's, it's an important, super important thing, right? 
hundred percent. Especially, especially if you have significant others, you have children, yeah. you have anything, right? Like cable management, all that stuff, super important. So. Super. I agree, Terry. No one. I, hopefully, one of the first people who gets this will do. So, somebody who just got a Mogwai SC sent me a picture, and he he must have read something I told him because, or read read something about what I thought the coolest set of tubes were because this man was running the cool like what I think are the coolest set of tubes for for this amp and so he had a 5961 which is what you're running for the input tube Marcello it's the best uh, 6SL7 that's made it's a, uh, otherwise known as an RCA red base yeah and then he had RCA 6L6 black plates uh you know sitting there it's just, I mean it, it, it it's quintessential 1960s recording studio power tubes and then he had an RCA 5U4 right there now what's nice is that you have solid state rectification here which keeps things a little simpler for people and it's going to give you a little bit more power but you know hopefully someone's going to go rca 5 5961 rca 6l6 is on that thing because it'll look so amazing you know yeah Dude, there's some really gorgeous tubes out there like you're talking about justin like they just just the aesthetic of them just like just mm, fantastic um, yes, Tyler's yeah. trying to show off his guns. Uh, no. <laughs> no! I'm not even talking about that. <laughs> this, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> the gun sh Welcome to the gun show. I will, I will not be party to this. <laughs> and there you go. Like, Taryn just... Because Rocky had a question, so... Probably in a few weeks it'll go up for pre-sale. I I said sometime this summer because I thought that's I misunderstood. So in a few weeks it looks like hopefully we'll we'll get some pre-sale on it. Depending on pictures, if Tyler photographs it in a timely fashion, gets you the results, which we know he's gonna do because he's an excellent photographer. I so, I mean, he he took pictures of our custom headphone stand and mm -hmm. uh, people people are buying it. So um, I like those custom headphone stands. I think they look uh, good. There, yeah, there it is. Yeah. You can just see it right there on my shelf. <laughs> yeah, look, I like them. I think they look good. So, yeah, everybody, so. are we taking a vote on, has Tyler in the last 14 days put a tape measure on his biceps? <laughs> <laughs> Not that vague. I don't see him. I don't see him doing that, yeah. Yeah, my daughter's Yeah, wait, than did I you am. say yet? <laughs> no, I said I don't see him doing that. I I could see him doing like a flex in the mirror or something like that, but no, not Those a tape, not a tape growing. measure. What dude Those doesn't do that? Growing. I mean, yeah, we, yeah, that's true. We all flex in the mirror a little bit. That's true. Um. Okay. So, so in a few weeks, that bad boy is going to be available for presale. All of us are looking forward to that. That's going to be awesome. And then the. Um, the Rockwell is available for sale right now, and there is a code that's good for what is it good for another week, Justin, or so that yep. gets you 10% off on the Rockwell, which is you know, that's over $500. Actually, get 10% off of Mogwai SC and above. above. Oh, yeah, so on. so that's true. Any of your products, Mogwai SC and above, you get 10% off. Um, on so if you go into the description of this live stream you will see a coupon code that Justin has kindly given to um, basically the community that follows this YouTube channel and friends of friends of ours. So it's a great way to save hundreds of dollars. Um, if you've been thinking about purchasing, um, you know, one of one of the more um, expensive amps that Justin manufactures. And then if you want the awesome sound of the Mogwai OG with Jupiter caps with the brand new designed case, epic like flat black coloring headphones.com branded that's going to be available for pre-order custom and impedances custom impedances custom and, and and that will be available for pre-order in a few weeks so and you've actually got... the custom impedances were done by committee this was not just a one-off they were they were yeah there was actually yeah. some so deliberation involved what, in although, although what were they although he's not on the stream but resolved had a pretty big say on it as well. So what uh, what did you guys decide on? That's a great question. I didn't I didn't hear That's the final verdict. Is it eight ohm and thirty two, or eight ohm and one hundred, or what? What did you guys go with? Uh, we went with eight and one hundred. Okay. Um, and then we're we're looking at a thirty two potentially down the line. 
Um, cool. But for the for the launch, it'll be eight and one hundred. Very cool. Awesome. So very cool. Yeah. Just just to keep things simple. And, uh, yeah, I found that that's very very effective with a pendant. I mean, you get a very good experience with that. And if you do the thirty two down the line, that'll be cool as well. So. Yeah. Well, the the eight. They just works really well with planar magnetic headphones as well, right? So for sure, um, it's just a ton of fun. For sure, excellent. That, that thirty, that thirty-two with the radiance. I know the thirty-two is a sweet spot. I mean, thirty-two is like one of my favorite for Justin's manufactured amps. So I think that uh, you can't go wrong either way. The Mogwai OG that I had was. Justin had made it special for me with an 8 and a 32, and I really dug it. But I think that um, the 8 and 100 sounds awesome, too. So, I I mean, whatever. Whatever your floats your boat, people will like. Either way, they both sound great. I will say that the 8 with the Focals is yes. also... Yes, it's primo. Very, nice. very primo. I like the 8. Like Elnick and, says. Elnick nailed it, yeah. 8 and 16 with the Focals on some of the bigger amps Justin makes is pretty perfect with focal stuff so, man. I, I want to answer this one question about iems and tube amps um <laughs> odyssey has you know their their planner to planner based uh iems uh which are super dope um if you ever want to see what a oh do you have them yeah oh right. cool they're um, purple if you ever want to see that, what a f but they're purple <laughs> i did my background see... lights for you I made it all purple for you. All my purple stuff I do for Tyler. Purple is life. If you, life is purple. It's good. It's good. If you ever want to see what a firefly looks like exploding, uh, do a tube amp and some IEMs. Oh, no. <laughs> Jeez. Don't do that at home, children, if you're watching no, for the first don't, time. Don't. 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 It, these. So... Lots of people generally choose um, solid state amps for their precision, low noise floor. Um, those are really great choices to choose a solid state amp. And then when people run more demanding things, they sometimes choose solid state amps for speakers and pair them to inefficient headphones. Um, all good choices. The reason to choose a tube amp typically is that you want some harmonic texture. You, you, we, the composition structurally of the sound is different than that of a solid state amp and more pleasing to our ears. And oh, by the way, for at least for my company, um, it is like taking a cattle prod to a bunny. We bring a big, I can't use the word, I'm not allowed to. Bunny scream, bring, by the way. We, 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 we bring really big power um, that is disproportionate to need, and um, IEMs would not survive that, that talking point. So Rocky Fox has a good question, um, and I can answer some of this, and then I'm sure Justin and everybody else will chime in too. So I, I actually will have a ZMF pendant review dropping hopefully this weekend. And I do talk about some Tomorrow. comparisons. Yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll see if I can get it done. Um, but uh, and then also I did talk about that in my Mogwai OG review that already dropped about a week ago. And there was direct comparisons talking about how the Mogwai OG compares to ZMF pendant. And the sound is going to be very similar to what um, headphones amp is going to be sounding like us except it's actually going to sound a little better because it's got the jupiter caps so their amp will be a lot a better the jupiters up. are yeah. huge huge up up and, up and, and, and the power supply got a little bigger so there you go so it's gonna so you can take some of that but ultimately you get more slam i think with a mogwai um it's a bit more uh i think it's a bit warmer sound and a tad more natural sounding the pennant has that feedback introduction which tends to um give you what a perceive a perception of more detail maybe and then also strings and trumpets and you know horns fall forward in the mix more so and maybe a slightly wider stage but those are my audible preferences or i mean opinions so that's just what i think 
doesn't mean that everybody's going to hear the same way. So um, both excellent. Love them both. Both fantastic amps. I had had the pennant for a long time and uh, I had the Mogwai for a couple months. And I mean, I would if I mean, if money was no object, you could own both and still have totally different sonic experiences. Yes, the new pendant does have Jupiter caps as well, Rocky. Absolutely. Absolutely. I w one thing I would say about the headphones.com, um, the amp that we don't have a name for yet, um, is that... The blessed one? The blessed, the blessed one, one, whatever we're going to call it. The, I'll tell you what, if you're running planar magnetic headphones, if you put KT88s in it, I mean, you just, the, the pendant, the pendant has some punch and it has a great sound, especially if you put my tubes in it that I like and you, it's punchy and has excellent staging. But if you like slam and punch and dynamics in your music, the Mogwai is just going to bring that. And I talk about that in the Mogwai OG review. So I would go just maybe watch that review when you have time after this and you'll get a pretty good back and forth of how they compare. It'll give you an idea. So hopefully that answers your question so we have a few more minutes to take a few more questions and i think can I, just, can I Justin wants to show, my, yeah my well no you want to show us don't you want to show us something you wanted to show I us do. something yeah, yeah show us his, 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 uh... <laughs> look at this guy what, what is, is this this is something <laughs> hold on hold on let me let me bring you up big screen there you go this is something that's living uh in captivity at the moment but will eventually make its way out of captivity Nice. This is what we are calling the Kenzie 2, 200. Nice. Because uh, my daughter's birthday is coming up, and she's finally getting her first Kenzie that I built. Jeez, almost nine years ago, the first Kenzie got built. Uh, and so now the Kenzie 2 will eventually come out. And if you all know, the middle tube is now different. It's yeah. different yet the same. And what I'm rocking there for the middle tube is a Sylvania black plate 5751. Sweet. Hmm. Which which is about as darn cool as it gets, in my opinion. And you can get a Sylvania black plate 5751 inexpensively, less than 100 bucks. Hmm? And it's probably one of the very, very, very best input tubes that exists, in my opinion. I can't go with you. Um, but... If you see this compared to like Tyler's, you know, this is a dense, this is a really dense layout. There's, it has gone unchanged in its layout. You know, there, there've been subtle changes, but like nothing demonstrable um, in nine years. And I think it's a little tight, but you know, I wanted this to be the size of a Webster's dictionary. And it's pretty darn close to the size of a Webster's dictionary. If you remember the cool. Webster's Dictionary. Yeah, the red, absolutely. The red Webster's we had in high school. Yep, absolutely. Um, you know, um, and for that, it, you know, it, it will continue to exist and, and be special because it, it it's a really small, compact, good amp. Rocking it, nine-pin tube without an adapter, that's that's the, the, the money shot for it. Um. But I think there's something to be said for like the bigger layouts now, having you know, having sat with these ideas for longer. I think so. Yeah, but, very, very cool. Um, in captivity, the nine-pin tubes are living quite nicely. They're growing up big and tall, as they say. <laughs> I like it. Very cool. Well, let's see. Do we have any other questions from the chat before we we close up shop yeah. for the night? Sorry. That's okay, buddy. Da daughter had to go to the bathroom. And yeah, no worries. And... Family first, brother. I gotta actually jam out pretty soon Dead here, much. anyways, because I gotta I gotta call my daughter real quick and say goodnight to her if she isn't already asleep. Um, but uh, what do we got? Anything else in the chat for any questions for Justin? Any questions for Taryn and uh, and uh, the new amp that's going to be available on headphones.com in a few weeks for pre-order? Any question for Tyler's bicep regiment? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> anything else we want to ask tonight before the night before we end this Creatine stream and whey powder <laughs> I, I, I do, steady, I, I, steady diet of whiskey steady diet of whiskey yeah steady diet of whiskey fasting, uh whiskey and uh i do do huel but that's more of a mule replacement than anything else and then uh but yeah then i just work out a lot 
That's, that's good. Uh, uh, oh, Jeremy had some cool ideas. Uh, Dark Star, Luna, Nebulous, Nova. Those are all really cool ideas mm -hmm. for an amp. Um, and then Mocha Mark says thank you to Justin for being here. And of course, Justin, thank you always for coming no, on the channel. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you. So I don't. I will say because it sometimes comes up. Um, everybody. You, so I'm a psychiatric social worker by profession. So I'm a I'm a talker. The reason why I'm a talker and not a writer is because I'm dyslexic. As the day is long. Uh, gotten help for that for a long period of time. So these kinds of forms are good for me because I can explain my ideas without having to worry about butchering sentence structure. Um, if anybody ever has a question on my site, there's always a phone number. Feel free to call. It goes further. You'll get a better answer, a more complete one. And I mean, uh, if you... I, I, I'm appreciative of everybody allowing me the opportunity to talk because... Uh, oh, dude. Ideas, ideas are more complete this way. We love having you on. I love having you on this channel. I know we all love having you on the channel. So, um, and I will say that if you go into the forums and talk, your service is legendary for answering people's questions and phone calls. Even if they don't end up buying something, you still take the time to talk to them, which is very rare in this day and age. And then headphones.com service is legendary. Some of the best service online shopping you can do. So that's why I was really 100%. stoked. I was really stoked to see you guys come together because you're two of my favorite favorite um you know people in this industry and companies in this industry um it looks like yeah it looks like tyler's got a jam pretty soon too because he's got to take care of family stuff and i so i think with that i think and i got a jam too for family stuff and i'm sure everybody wants to jam and eat i'm hungry too man i'm all, all i can think about is a steak or pizza now or both maybe like <laughs> a steak, a steak in. wrapped in a pizza or something i don't know i'm so hungry but um, one of I the want... pizzas i had was a uh steak or a uh, philly cheesesteak pizza so uh <laughs> sounds so good uh so taryn i want to thank you for being here this is the first time taryn's been on on uh the channel so i appreciate you coming tonight taryn and spending time with us and talking about your new amp you rock bro and justin always thank you so much for coming on and talking about your incredible amps and sending me amps to review and check out i love the rockwell you have a real winner on your hands with this amp i'm stoked and i know i gotta finish reviewing it next week and send it on its way but of course like all your amps i never want to do that tyler always a pleasure to have you on as well brother thank you so much and for, for modeling the Mogwai with your arms so well and holding it up for such a long amount of time. I mean, that is a heavy amp, no joke. That is a heavy amp, I know. The old Mogwai was heavy, and so this one's even bigger. So, excellent job, yeah, man. Glowing, and, uh, it's glowing, it's fantastic. And, uh, thank you, of course, to everybody out there in the chat. Thank you for joining us and supporting the channel. Thanks for the super chats. Thanks for just being here and having your great questions. Uh, Sheldon, Ray Rod, Rocky, Elnrick, uh, Snow Ranger, Jeremy, JTB, Rocky, I said that already. You all know who I'm talking about. Everybody out there, thank you. And I guess with that, anybody, Justin, do you want to say anything to close us out? No, I mean, you guys, I, I, yes. Look at some DIY projects, guys. I think that whether it's build your own cable, I will say like one thing that makes uh, a simple change that makes systems super awesome is having cables that are the, the right length power cords that aren't three feet longer than they need to be and uh you know either on headphones.com or on discord let's get at each other and try to actually step up each other's game custom cable links super awesome very cool very cool i love it so with that let's have a wonderful weekend justin enjoy that ruth chris tonight and whatever else you guys are eating or sipping on tonight, enjoy. And thanks again, everybody, for being here with us tonight. And everybody have a wonderful weekend. As always, much love. Thank you, guys. Cheers.